Welcome in to another episode of the Delco Duo on PHL 17. I'm Monica Kryan. And I'm Jenna Meisner. Thanks so much for spending a little bit of your Saturday night with us. Monica, are you nervous? I mean, it's Saturday night. The Broad Street Run is tomorrow. I'm carbo loading during the whole and show. You are taking on the 10 mile trek. I know. I up Broad Street. I cannot believe it is tomorrow. I'm hoping the forecast holds. We'll see. You've been training. Be You've been training. You're ready for this. You feel so I got energized. To, I got to seven miles. You know, the whole run's 10. Um, but they so, say not to actually get to the 10. Well, especially for people like, you know, a lot of people may be running for their personal best. And I'm just running to, to get back it. into it. Just running to say you did it. Yes. I don't, you completed it. I am not timing myself. I am just completing this. So, so you're not in like the first, what are they even <laughs> called? Like the first, like what they break you into? Like right. The groups? Like, the, like the, basically the tiers. Yes. No, I am not in the first tier. I'm the first back. tier are people who are like trying to beat their number or like yes. be number one. And you're just there to... I used to run it. This was a this was a way for me, you know, after having the two kids and, you know, me and my husband were, were done having kids, I wanted to see how badly my body has gone. Okay. <laughs> and, and how much I needed to rebuild. And there was, a, I really did feel like through this process, I've been able to rebuild a little bit. And you're proving to yourself that you can do it. So yeah, the more power to you, I guess maybe next Delco do an episode, we can talk about how her experience went. Well, they have, they have pictures. So maybe I'll try and get a picture. Oh, they have pictures of like the finish line. I don't want to see what I would look like running 10 miles. Wish me luck. And if you see for me, you. wave high. Don't slow her down though. She's going to be lightning flying by you. <laughs> All right, let's get to our debrief. So we've been busy. Yeah, we have. We had a fun event that we just recently went to, the Delco Press Club. Which is such a cool organization for right. networking, and we were able to meet so many fun people. Yes, and they had so many cool questions. So Jenna and I got up there, and we talked about kind of our start in the career right. and, and, and the business and how we got to PHL 17, and then we talked a lot about how PHL has given us, you know, kind of what we like to call free reign uh, <laughs> to do what we want. It, it's not even called free reign. It's just it absolute. Is free reign which like, is why the show that's how the Delco duo was born so the Delco press club was very interested in the inner workings of this broadcast so if you are a part of the Delco press club or you yeah. went to the event and you are now watching we so appreciate that but we were very honest we said that there is no sort of script script there is no um they structure to... if you will I mean yes right. we have graphics and whatnot but there's no sort of sort of pre-show post-show meeting it's just we show up and right they're like the cameras Talk. in front of us that usually for the news have um, a script or like a rundown. We've got none of that for the uh, for Delco Duo, mm -hmm. and I think the press club was really interested in learning about how we get the show on the on the air. And Jenna and I basically said we don't know, <laughs> we, we don't know how this makes. We it have help with the guys in the back, yeah. so shout out to you. But otherwise, we just sit here and talk. And I'm sure some people are watching are like, yeah, we can tell. Like, <laughs> yep. But. Um, I, we hope that you enjoy it. So thanks it for having fun. us. And um, I'm, I'm glad we found out about them because the, they are truly Delco people. So it, we just felt yep. home. Yep. We felt amongst our own. And if you're interested, like Jenna, this is not a, this is a shameless plug. Um, if, if anybody else is interested and they have events, uh, Delco do at PHL17.com. Yeah, book us for your next event. We do birthday parties. <laughs> we do first communions. No, no just kidding. No, no, I'm not doing those. No, no, no. And then also, so yes, Part of the like, debrief. we're very, you know, Delco famous A-listers, but I think a woman named Kara mm -hmm. is also about to be Delco famous. So we have a clip. So let's show you that first and then we'll tell you what it is. Amazing. Who knew? Beautiful. So, yes, Delco, you know, we get a rap sometimes for being rough, rough around the edges, nitty and gritty. Not but this girl. she is amazing opera singer. I yes. mean, just stunning. Kara Goodrich yes. um, is from Ardmore. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, like little classy Delco. Yeah, but still, the classy Delco. Classy Delco. But uh, an amazing opera singer and... Um, part of the Philadelphia Opera. And this is 
like her La newest pro- production, La Boheme. And that's happening April 28th through May 7th. So okay. they sent that to us. Go see it. Um, and we were very impressed. So we wanted to show you. And, you know, who doesn't want to hear opera on a Saturday night? <laughs> you know, and then like at the end, maybe hold your Delco in. But at the end when she comes out and does the bow, go, yeah. Woo, 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 woo. Throw wah-wah hoagies. Yeah. There you sure go, Kara. The, You'll I'm love sure it. the uh, Philadelphia uh, Opera w- or Opera <laughs> Philadelphia would really appreciate that. So, but congratulations, that's major. I mean, that's a breakout role to have. Um, and Beautiful she's a, voice. She's a soprano. Didn't you say you felt you were a soprano no. when you did choir? No, I was an alto. Oh, an alto. that's what that my. What's an alto? An alto's lower. You know how she goes really high. So soprano is high. high? Yeah. Um, a lot. I don't. I don't know much about opera, but you know. <laughs> you don't the, say the um, uh, the the prima donnas, the prima donnas of opera Isn't back that in the a day. Negative connotation, though. No, no, no. Like, I just, feel like my mom calls me a prima donna. That it has gotten a negative connotation, but back in the day, they were the you know the stars, the prima donnas. Um, I think they like all were sopranos. You didn't have many altos up there going rah rah rah. Yeah. So like La Boheme, Delco native. She's breaking out as a star role, April 28th to May 7th. So thanks for sending that to us. Yeah, that's awesome. I really enjoyed it. Yep. All right. First issue coming up. Time to get to what we're here to do. Solve your problems. We we have so much to talk about during the debrief, we forget. Fred from Fullcroft says, I refuse to take my girlfriend to a nice restaurant because she eats like a kid. We really are emphasizing the period here in this graphic. Like, eats like a kid, period. Well, Fred, I actually praise you for even sticking it through a relationship. Not even just dinner, but, you know, even having a relationship. If someone eats like a kid, Mm -hmm. that's a deal breaker for me. Really? That bothers you? Yes. So when we say eat like a kid, we're thinking chicken nuggets, pizza. No. Pastas. Oh, see, I was not thinking that way. Oh, you're thinking thinking like how how they cuts her food. No, he totally means like on the menu, she eats like a kid. Because he's nice you, restaurants. How do you know that? Because that's the only way it could be. Oh, how see, do you, she's not, I think a grown woman is not eating like a, like with her hands and stuff. No, like I wasn't thinking, would be. Yeah, or even like when you're cutting a piece of meat or cutting a piece of steak, like this cutting so it like so annoyingly or not even cutting it kind of just, you know. I took a totally different direction than you. I was thinking like food choices of a child versus act behaving like a child at dinner. Well, now I got to rethink my thoughts on all of this. If she cuts her pasta and doesn't twirl it, <laughs> done. You, you got to end the relationship. If she doesn't cut her meat properly and like the whole table shakes beneath her, break it off. If she's ordering chicken nuggets, give her a break. Well, I, I agree with Fred that I, would, I wouldn't I would bring my significant other to a restaurant if we're going to a, like a nice restaurant yes. and they're ordering one off the kid's menu, which I don't even think you're able to do when, right. you There's know. There's not like, a lot of kid's menu at stake. Right. Now, so. Like, I think they're going to be like, you're a little bit old for that. But two, why spend the money? Because even chicken fingers at a nice restaurant exactly. are going to be like $25 or more. So okay. why spend the money? To, I see what you're saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? In, in that case, yes. Don't bring, just bring them to diners. You know what I mean? Spend less, go to a diner, get more bang for your buck, and you is can still order. Is that a deal breaker for you, though? So the deal breaker for you no. is if they cut or, if you If they know, cut their food weird or. But if or, they eat like a child, as far as food choices, can they stick around? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, kids' food is delicious. I'm Chicken definitely fingers. a picky eater, mm-hmm. but I will. As I've gotten older, I'll definitely try things. Like, yeah. I don't, I feel like I order normal adult food. And I feel like that can be a really fun part of the date is when you're being introduced to new foods. But like when my seem husband. like she likes it, though. I know. But maybe try and introduce her each time. Like, hey, do you want to try this off my plate? So you're and saying keep bringing her to the nice restaurants? It gets real romantic then. No, no, no. Not, not a lot. Once, once a year. Once a year, try it out. Okay. Or maybe try to make more unique meals at home. And then, like a test run, yeah. And then bring it to the restaurant oh my sphere. That's, that's it's a lot of work, though. It is. All right, we've got another issue from a viewer coming up. Um, it's about family vacations. Oh, okay. We all been on those. So I know. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Stay with us. <laughs> Bye. 
And welcome back to the Delco Duo. I got to show off my new running shoes. Can you see? Oh, are those for the Broad Street Run? Yeah. So you, you, they're not just reserved for running. They're, you're really breaking them in. Well, I, I, I trained with them, so I will use them for the Broad Street. And I actually kind of like them. They're super cute. Yeah. Aren't they? They are. So what's so special about them? Like, why are they? Oh, I don't know. I just went to a store <laughs> and I said my foot's, my foot was falling asleep when I was training in the beginning. <laughs> I, I could not get to even three miles. I think that's like something you need to check out. Like, that's not a normal occurrence Abs that your feet are falling asleep when you're running. Absolutely. I agree. It hurts so bad. You would think, oh, it's numb. Like, and it like, doesn't hurt. Don't your hurt. legs give out? Like, don't, I feel like my it, legs would just give out. It, at times, I was. I was struggle busting at like mile three. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here. And then... Um, I went to a store and I just said, listen, I just want like, you know, a, a nice running pair of shoes. And the guy was like, absolutely not. We need to, you know, look at your gate to gate and we need to look oh, at your stride. Please. And I thought, oh, this is so ridiculous. Wait, this he must is have thought you were gearing up for the New York Marathon. Or yes. <laughs> and, and then I was like, Broad Street, 10 miles. And he's like, okay, I just ran that in my sleep last night. But he, they did the whole process of like looking at my stride and, and. So do you run in the store? How do they look yes, at Yes, they stride? have a treadmill. Oh my God. Well, no, Jenna. <laughs> this is a whole. That's not weird. Other conversation that I would, I would hate that so much. It was, I did not want it. And the did guy. Did you show up in workout clothes knowing that? Like what if you show up no, in jeans? I, I did. <laughs> I did. And he, they could not stand me. They were like, you are what's wrong with this sport. Like, and so I they should have turned you away. Now, mind you, my, I have got my kids with me too. And the kids are running through the store and the guy's like, can you get your kids together? I said, listen, I just wanted a pair of shoes. And he goes, that's not how we work. We need to do the research. And oh, that's so funny. They did it. I think it was Roadrunners in King of Prussia. They, oh, don't, they don't let you out of the store unless you do the whole thing. So I, they finally gave me their recommendation. And I was like, oh, whatever. And I put them on and I life love, changing. love these shoes. Like, well, you I better will, get good use out of those because that's expensive to do all that. Aren't they cute too? Um, but my foot does not fall asleep. Good. I mean, that's that's it, man. I'm that's a so win. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get to our next issue of the night from Amy from Alden. She says, my son is mad at us because we made him quit his part-time job to go on our yearly family vacation. Ooh. A little bit more context. Um, so he works at the local pool and he worked there for six weeks. And upon being hired, he had told his boss that he had this vacation upcoming. But even though he had let them know that, he had only been there for six weeks. So I guess that's not enough time accrued. And he, um, they, they denied his request. Denied his request for time off. Wow. That's, there's You a are lot. a lifeguard. Is it I that was, strict? No. It's it's not like maybe because it's cool. a summer job and you know yeah I th I think we took week vacations and I would request off they they had plenty of lifeguards at the time and so you know you took a took a week off it was okay however I don't really think it's right of the parents to make the the kid quit I know my dad would never he he would more on the side of like you miss out on this family vacation because you have work. Like that's kind of I think the, how well much it, it about seems this. like the son is as Amy mm -hmm. wrote in and said the son is mad at the parents yeah I'm surprised for making him quit I on the other hand would be like I want to go on my family vacation you know yeah it's a part time job you this is not going to be mean forever. failure for this is not like setting you up to never get another job in your life get there's a million pools in the summer I'm sure you could get another lifeguarding job at one of those, but your family vacation, your yearly vacation, yeah. I feel like is somewhere that you just, you look back on when you get older and you're like, oh, I loved when we did that for that's, a week. That's very nice of you. I was- <laughs> Were you trying to get out oh, of here? I can't tell you how many family vacations I tried to get out of. I was, Why? I was young, yeah. I was a brat. Like I, if I had a boyfriend at the time, I wouldn't want to leave him for like a week. Oh. I remember- God forbid. I remember one time, um, well, one time my family went to uh, Cancun, Mexico, mm -hmm. and I had a boyfriend at the time, and I fought it tooth and nail. I did not want to go on you this vacation. You were going vacation. to Mexico. And I wanted to stay with my boyfriend, and my like, new one at the time. And have you, have you thought about him since then? No. Like, where is I he mean, today? <laughs> where is the boyfriend that made you not want to go to Cancun today? <laughs> i tell you what, though. Cancun, it was a good old time. My parents... It, it's a balancing act, though, because you don't want to 
teach your child that it's okay to quit something. That's what I'm kind you of want, on the side of. I always grew up and was raised that you can't quit. If you've started nope. something, you must see it through and you must finish it. Now, if you finish it and you don't like it, you don't have to do it again, right. but you have to finish. I, that's, where, that's what I was saying, is I'm surprised the parents would make him quit. In an age where everyone just quits because they don't want to do something or they want to go on vacation, you're teaching your son right now it's okay to quit a job that he committed to. I don't think that's right. Okay, I, I like that. I yeah. would agree with that. Plus, he might have a girlfriend that he doesn't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard. It's hard. So uh, I don't know. Maybe you have an experience with this with one of your kids or you when you were younger. Right. So as always, you can write into us and let us know. Delco Duo at PHL17.com. All right, coming up, we have one of our own issues. It's that time of the night where we dish on some problems of our own. All right, make sure you stay with us. I'll talk more. And welcome back to the Delco Duo. We take problems that anyone has from anywhere. You don't have to be from Delco. Mm -hmm. We just give you a Delco spin, some advice on it. So Absolutely. That's how the show works. So we solved or tried to solve two of your problems, and now it's time for us to talk about one of our own. All right. Let's see whose turn it is this week. Eisner needs an advisor. What do you got for us? All right. So I feel as if, quote unquote, that like sort of nesting mode. Mm -hmm. You know, as you're getting closer to closer to your due date, I'm starting to feel that way. So there, I have a number of problems I could pick from, um, <laughs> but right, like all in all, I it's gotta prioritize health, my problems here. The the baby's healthy. Yes. Oh, the baby's absolutely. Healthy, That's but all that now matters. Right. All that matters. But we're starting to get to like the <sighs> and uh, the amount of the the checklist, and I feel like there's so much pressure to prior to having the baby, like, oh, did you do this or did yeah. you do that? Is the nursery done? Yada 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 yeah so got a lot of problems to pick from but one that I'm curious in more of an opinion is this idea of a push present mm -hmm. so this is definitely something I would say is newer like my mom can't wrap her head around a push present absolutely not and I don't know I mean you had kids Josephine what mm -hmm. it'll be four years ago in June um yes yeah. <laughs> yeah, right she'll be four in yes. June yeah it's crazy so it was the thing when Joe was born four years ago. Mm -hmm. So how much, like, when did this start? It started a while ago. I mean, I, I would say probably with millennials. It's more like a millennial. We thing. need a gift for everything. Like, yeah, I did this, so reward me. I know. And I, I actually don't love the term push present. Yeah. You know, that's, what, that's what it's caught on as. So what would you call especially it? Especially nowadays, because, you know, there are births take many different oh, shapes yeah. and sizes to call it a push gift. Right. It's, it's like almost it's it's a because and you can't even call it a carrying kind of gift. You, you may not even carry this child and, and you still are a mom or you just still deserve. Absolutely. So the whole push present kind of weirds me out. And I thought the gift enough was the child. Mm -hmm. What did you get? I did. Okay, <laughs> let's get to the let's get to the bottom oh, yes. of this. You're being very PC right now with with your with your response here, but Eugene, you did get Eugene did get me a okay. present. So, um, but our five year anniversary was the same uh, within a week. So he it said was combined. It, combined. So that's sort of what because you're dealing with that. I'm dealing with right now. So um, I just had a birthday. Yes. Mother's Day is interesting because I, I'm a mother. I, even yes. though, you know, I'm still carrying the baby. I'm still, and even if, you, like you were saying, if, you know, someone else carried the baby or your right. stepmom or foster or whatever, you're a mom regardless. Right. So Mother's Day um, and then, you know, the, the due date, which is in like a month and a half at this point. Right. So now, you know, Tate's combining all of these, Things. all of these events, birthday, yep. Mother's Day, you know due date so for my birthday he gave me the gift that was all encompassing and right. I was upset by that because I said well I gotta gotta have the baby to have the gift yes you know what I mean and he he was disagreeing with me that he just felt well it's for your birthday it's for mother's day and it's for you know the quote-unquote push gift whatever you want to yes. call it am I wrong for saying you gave it to me too early well no uh, or I I kind of do agree that push presents or some of these um, presents that are all encompassing, 
because there's so many dates and they kind of these presents have gotten so extravagant that you can't really gift it at the hospital anymore. Oh, well, no. See, I, I wouldn't even want it gifted at the right. hospital. I, maybe like a couple weeks after or. I mean, I know like some people are getting like diamonds for like these gifts. And yeah. in that case, sometimes it's like I know my one friend, she got uh, diamond earrings and I was like, oh, my God, that is so nice. <laughs> But they didn't arrive until like a month after the kid was born because like the guy ordered it from a jeweler and she yeah. was all huffy about the fact it, that it came like a month late. And I was I like, would oh never. my God, you're getting diamond earrings. Yeah. See, that's when it turns into like, okay, right. relax here. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you know, he, he got me a very lovely piece of jewelry and then you're dealing with birthstones. Well, what if you go early and you know, you're on the cusp of May and June, you know, what if it's the end of May and now the birthstone's completely right. different. That so, you really want to be careful about because yeah. the birthstone thing, yes, babies can come four weeks ahead right. or after due date. Right. Like it, and I, my two sisters, obviously, they have children and they both received, you know, the, the push present and whatnot. And yeah. my one sister's husband is always like, even when it's Christmas, it's not just with this one gift. He's always gifting so early. So right. she had hers like four months prior to the arrival of her son. Yeah. And, no, I and then it's... my other sister, they sort of waited to see, well, what is the actual birthstone going to be? Because I know that's a really popular. Right. So I think Tate was kind of like getting opinions from a lot of different places and then he went shopping with my mother and you know my mom is always like she gets excited about things yeah but you know I, I wore it the other day and she was like I didn't know he was gonna give that to you oh, already so now you can't wear it don't wear it until the baby's here oh why it's technically it's my birthday has passed it's part of that Oh I'll probably wear it to the baby shower. I don't know. Oh, I just... that's cute. That is nice. That is nice. I don't know. Well, it is all encompassing. It's not just a push present. It's, you know, birthday, Mother's Day. So wear it when you like. Okay. Interesting topic. I, I know people either love it or hate it. Yeah. Let's give you a trivia question here. Okay. Here it comes. Okay. Which A-list actress briefly lived in any I think this might surprise a lot of people. Surprise me. Stay with us. Someone at the Delco Press Club told us about this, so we decided to make it a trivia question. Which A-list actress briefly lived in Eddie Stone? Keyword is briefly. Okay, people don't come at us. People are starting to come at us for these for these trivia, trivia questions. questions. Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. What? Who? New. And there's photos to prove it. So if you're going to be out there, you're going to email us and say, this trivia question's wrong. I will be gladly send you the pic photo. I just, it's, it we don't have brief. the copyright. We don't have the copyright to show it on TV. <clears throat> it, was, it was a brief, brief stop in Eddie Stone. It was like two months. Okay. I don't, I mean, now that might be wrong, but it was a, it was a short span of months. It wasn't like she was here for, you know, years. Right, and and we have a hard time finding info about it, but like she was so young, so young, and it was because her dad he was taking the train, I believe, to New York for Days of Our Lives. Because mm -hmm. her dad he, is also a famous. He was actor. a soap. He was a soap yeah. opera star. I didn't, I had no idea about that either. Yes. So, and another interesting thing, her last name was Greek. Is Greek Jennifer Aristadaraki? So it's hard to find out that info. <sighs> Her, her last name is short. See, you learn something new every day with the Delco Duo. If you want to talk to us, Delco Duo at PHL17.com. Monica, good luck at the Broad Street hey, Run. You should just stay up and just go right from no. here. You're dressed. You got your sneakers on. I'm ready to go. You're ready to go. All right. We'll see you next Saturday. I wonder if anyone